Alhamdulillahilladhi ja'ala fi kulli zamanin fatratan min ar-rusul baqaya ahli al-ilm yad'una man dalla ila al-huda yuhyuna bi kitabillahi ahla al-'ama wa yasbiruna minhum 'ala al-adha fa kam min qatilin lil-iblis qad ahyaw wa kam min dhalin ta'ihin qad hadaw thumma salatu ba'du was salam 'ala an-nabiy al-qurashi al-khatam Muhammad khatam rusul rabbih wa alihi wa ashabihi al-abrar al-ha'iz maratib al-fakhar amma ba'd ibadullah usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah fa innahu liman ittaqahu wa qah usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah fa innaha wasiyatu fa innaha wasiyatu rabbil ibad lil awwalin wal akhirin kama tasarraha bi dhalik fi muhkam tanzilih a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان اتقوا الله عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فانها وصيه خير الانام نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كما جاء في الحديث اتق الله حيث ما كنت واتبع سيئه الحسنه تمحوها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن فيا عباد الرحمن اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فانها وصيه الصالحين فيما بينهم كما جاء عن عمر بن عبد العزيز وهو في مرض موته وفي فراش موته يجاهز نفسه للفراغ من الدنيا فقال لاهله وهو ينصحهم اتقوا الله فانه لمن اتقاه وقاه ولمن شكره زاد اما بعد فيا عباد الرحمن فان من مقاصد الشريعه التي جاء الشرع لحمايتها حمايه العقل وحمايه النفس او دي بلافد براذرز اند سيسترز ان ايمان فاست اند فورموست اي وود ويش تو ادفايز ماي سيلف اند ادفايز يو with the advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us all with the advice of our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the advice of pious muslims amongst themselves the same advice of being god conscious having piety fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for wallahi al-azim inna lil muttaqina mafaza success in this life and in the hereafter is fully dependent upon being pious and being god conscious as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states in surah an-naba dear brothers and sisters in iman our deen our religion was revealed to come and protect five things we call them maqasid al-shari'ah al-khamsa amongst these five things is himayatu al-qalb himayatu al-aql wa himayatu an-nafs our sharia our religion has come to protect a person's mind a person's mind and a person's life and due to that inshallah in our khutbah today we will be addressing mental health we will be addressing sihatu al-aql الذي يندلي الى صحه النفس since mental health translates into the health of a person we can't separate between the two فيا عباد الرحمن لقد امرنا الله عز وجل في كتابه وهو يفشي لنا سرا ولا يفهمه الا الاذكياء فيقول الله تعالى اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن يعش عن ذكر الرحمن نقيض له شيطانا فهو له قرين دي براذرز اند سيسترز ان ايمان الله سبحانه وتعالى شيرز ويز اس او راذا هي از شيرينج ويز اس ا سيكريت ذات none will understand unless they are amongst those who are smart enough to comprehend 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعُشْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ For he or she who would turn a blind eye to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he or she who would be forgetful with the regards to the remembrance of Allah, then نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will appoint for you a devil. If you are to forget his remembrance in return, Allah will punish you by appointing a special devil who would be with you. فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ And this devil will be your companion throughout throughout in your life until you turn back into remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-su'alu alladhi yatrah nafsahu lil-ijabah kayfa taslim kayfa taslim min amradin nafsiyah wa amradil qalbiyah wa shaytanu al-la'een qareenun lak The question that we need to ask ourselves, we need to ponder about is how would you be free from mental illness, spiritual illness, and yet the cast shaitan, the cast devil is your companion. How would you have mental stability? How would you have spiritual stability? How would you be contented with whatever you have and yet shaitan is your companion? Wallahi la najata min dhalik. You won't be successful in that. Ashar'u ya ahbaba ya ahbaba ar-Rahman Ashar'u yas'a ila sti'isal ila sti'isal mushkilati مشكلة أمراض القلبية وأمراض الروحية وأمراض الأقل من حيث جدورها أو أصلها. Our religion, our religion seeks to annihilate. It seeks to totally remove, to totally destroy, to totally terminate the problem that causes spiritual illness, or if you would like. We would refer to it as mental illness. Our religion, in essence, aims at totally removing, totally dissecting and removing the causes, the main causes that causes mental illness. If you want mental health, if you want to be mentally stable, if you don't want to suffer from spiritual illness, kalqalaq wal humum wal humum, like uh, anxiety and despair and depression, then know that in our religion we have a solution to that. Faya ibad al Rahman, yaqulu Allah Taala, fi ayatin ukhra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to explain to us in another verse how we can get rid of what we call spiritual illness. How can we attain total mental health? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من عملا صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى فلنحييينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم بأجرهم ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. For a person who would live in this world, for a person who would come into this world and will stick to his purpose by worshiping Allah سبحانه وتعالى. الذي يعمل صالحا، a person who will be committed, who will be focused in doing good deeds، then Allah سبحانه وتعالى tells that person or rather he assures that person، فا 
فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتًا طَيِّبًا That in this life, in dunya, he will be given or she will be given a good life. Free from ailments of this dunya. Free from mental instability. Free from depression. Free from anxiety. Free from stress. A beautiful life here in dunya. Sort of like a little jannah before the ultimate, uh, before the ultimate gift. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elaborating the essence of the religious plan with regards to getting rid of what we call mental instability. Yubayyinu Allah azza wa jalla lana kayfiyat isti'isal mashakil, mashakil nafsiyya. وَمَشَاكِلْ رُوحِيَّةِ وَمَشَاكِلْ دُنْيَوِيَّ بِأَكْمَالِهَا فَيَا عِبَادَ الرَّحْمَانِ فَهَا لَنَا نَبِيُّنَا الصَّادِقُ الْمَصْدُوقِ كما في حديث ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه يقول قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كانت الآخرة همه من كانت الآخرة همه جعل الله له غناه في قلبه وجمع له شمله وأتاه الدنيا وهي راغمة ومن كانت الدنيا همه جعل الله فقره بين عينيه وفرق عليه شمله ولم يأتيه من الدنيا إلا ما قدر له أخرجه ترمذي وصححه الإمام الألباني كما في صحيح الجامع Dear brothers and sisters in Iman الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام here in short in a nutshell he explains to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant in the two previous verses. He elaborates it for us. He says, and this is the solution to what we call mental instability. This is the solution to spiritual ailment. Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam says, for a person for a person who will be fully concerned in his akhirah, in pleasing Allah, in obedience to Allah, for this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him what we call richness of the heart. Allah will give him contentment. He will be contented by whatever little he will have. He won't be owned by people. But rather he will be owned by Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Razaq, Ar-Shafi. Dear brothers and sisters in Iman, for a person who will put his or her focus in Akhirah, who will focus in worshipping Allah, for this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put all his affairs in place. So he won't need to go into depression because of dunya. He won't be anxious because he's thinking of the future. لا يهمه الحزن أو القلق من المستقبل ولا يهمه الحزن مما مضى he won't be interested, or rather she won't be interested to have stress because of his or her future. Nor will they regret that which passed him. فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ مَا أَصَابَكْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكْ وَمَا أَخْطَأَكْ 
لم يكن ليصيبك هذا عقيدة المؤمن This is the aqidah, the creed of a true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faya ibad ar-Rahman. If you will have this creed in you, then you won't be in need of people. Wa ya'atihi al-dunya wa hiya gharima. The whole world will be laid in front of you, before you. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa kafiluk wa anta tawakalta alayhi wa anta tawakalta alayhi wa huwa maulana huwa maulana subhanallah you have placed all your reliance upon him Allah won't ever let you down so the whole dunya will be put in front of you under your feet waman kanat al akhirah waman kanat al dunya hamuhu but if you will be concerned because of this dunya and this is the source of mental illness you are stressed you are depressed because of the future i can't I can't afford living in this area. Yeah, go to an area you can afford. Go to an area you can afford. I can't pay for this and this at this level. Go to a level in which you can be comfortable pocket-wise. It's not sensible. The best accountants should be Muslims. The best entrepreneurs should be Muslims. The best finances should be Muslims. Why? We live by our means. Unzur ila man huwa dunak. Look at the person who is below you. Don't look at people who are ahead of you. You'll be stressed for nothing. So if this dunya will be your focal point, then wallahi al-azim. فَهَيْآتَ هَيْآتَ والله you are in total loss. Why? Because Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you fully dependent upon others. Why? فَقْرُقْ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْكَ Your poverty, your need for others will be placed before your sight. You can't make a move in life until you go begging. You go begging others instead of begging Allah al-Razaq. Ushghilta bi dunya wa ushghilta bi ta'at al-makhluqi. Li'annaka ishtaghalta an ibadat al-khaliq bi talab al-dunya. Fasarat al-dunya أكبر همك من أن يكون الله أكبر همك robbed yourself of this great opportunity of being a sincere servant to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and now Allah puts you into servitude to others. You'll be used the way Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawzi says, فَصَارَ يَقْدَحْ كَدْحَ الْوُحُوشِ فِي خِدْمَةِ الْغَيْرِ أو فِي خِدْمَةِ غَيْرِهِ You will be used like a donkey. Why? Because dunya is your point of focus, not akhira. And this is what draws people into depression. This is what makes a person not to be contented by whatever Allah has bestowed upon him or her. In addition to which, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't leave you at that. You become a slave servant to others. You won't be self-sufficient. You won't be independent of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't leave you at that. 
because you decided to focus in this dunya then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala farraka alayhi shamlahu your affairs your affairs will never be in order you'll be running up and down trying to collect whatever you can collect and nothing 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 will be made good for you why your affairs have been have been uh, disarrayed by Allah himself wa farraka alayhi shamlahu who is who is the one disarraying who is the one putting your affairs into disarray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will come and straighten your affairs for you if Allah is the one who set it into disarray who in addition to which subhanallah lam ya'tihi min ad-dunya illa ma quddira lahu this is the reality you will only be given that which was predetermined for you by Allah ما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وما أخ... وما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك This is the reality This is the reality dear brothers and sisters in iman what puts us into depression thinking about dunya why are we anxious in life because we are thinking about dunya كيف يتقواج how will tomorrow be focus in pleasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa may yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja wa yarzuquhu min haythu la yahtasib if you want to focus in worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you won't need to fear for your rizq because it's a guarantee allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you that he will give it to you استغفروا ربكم انه كان غفارا ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ولو كره الكافرون ولو كره المشركون فاما بعد يا عباد الرحمن ففي قضيه صيحه العقليه وجهات النظر وجهات النظر بين تفريط وافراط فمنا فمنا من يسعى الى استخفاف بشان الرقي او العلاج الشرعي ومنا ومنا يا عباد الرحمن من يسعى الى استثمار من الرقي الشرعي والواجب علينا ان نكون امه وسطا لا الى هؤلاء ولا الى هؤلاء فيا عباد الرحمن راينا من يستخفف من شان من شان الرقيه الشرعيه وراينا من يستثمر بالرقيه الشرعيه فما الصحيح وما الواجب علينا التمسك به dear brothers and sisters in iman in matters of mental health we have different schools of thoughts we have those who do not regard ruqya who do not regard spiritual healing as a mode of medication but rather they take it lightly and if you would wish to say you would say that yastahzi'una bihi aw biha they despise it they take it lightly what is this he is suffering from mental health take him to madhare 
يا اخي اين ايمانك اين حسن ظنك بالله تبا لك وو انت ذي تبا لك وو انت ذي فمن يتوكل على غير الله وكل له ما توكل عليه if you want to rely on allah then whatever you chose whatever you chose as your point of reliance you will be forced to be totally dependent upon it no wonder you see people for years and years they continue taking the same medication they are not healed from whatever they are suffering from wallahu shafi allah is the healer wa hunaka man ittajaha tijah istithmari min ar-ruqya shar'iyya and yet we have this other point of view some people have turned exploitative with regards to spiritual healing they view ruqya as an investment but rather they invest heavily into ruqya think think dear brothers and sisters in iman inma al-a'mal bin-niyat this hadith which imam shafi'i alayhi rahmatullah said يدخل في اكثر من 70 باب من ابواب الفقه this hadith because of its greatness it forms the backbone of our actions and deeds dear brothers and sisters in iman that actions are rewarded by allah according to intentions just think for a for a minute for a person who will choose to exploit ruqya who will look at ruqya as an investment and not as an act of worship as an investment and not as an act of worship how will allah heal the people who go through his or her hands so we've got these two schools of thoughts those who tell us go to the psychologists that is why you should go don't be backward subhanallah they refer to their deen as backward we've seen them kam min unasin kam ra'ayna and those who view ruqya as an investment without ruqya they think they can't eat or drink they exploit it there is nothing wrong with being given something in return for ruqya but it's very wrong for you to exploit it and view it katijara like an investment or a business you need to do it for the sake of allah you need to do it why because rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man kana fi awn al-abd kana allah fi awnihi aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam that provided you assist others then allah will be in your debt allah will assist you you need to view ruqya that way not as a business investment dear brothers and sisters in iman what is incumbent upon us is for us to take the middle path because we are ummatul wasatiyah we are umma which has been given the middle path we shouldn't lean towards these ones nor lean towards those ones but rather we need to take the middle path so what is the middle path qala shaykh ibn baz alayhi rahmatullah wa qad suila an qadiyat al ilaj lil amrad ar ruhiya bi istimal al adwiya الحسيه الكيماويه فقال مجيبا للسائل شيخ ابن باز was asked about the matter of a person who seeks treatment from spiritual or from mental illness through chemical medications or through what we call the mainstream or modern way of uh, treatment فقال للسائل 
he told the person who asked him that question, لا تضارب بين جمع رقية الشرعية وبين استعمال الأدوية الكيماوية ما لا تسعى ذلك ما لم تسعى ذلك إلى إعطاء الضرر الأكبر There is no problem with someone combining the two provided that the chemicals you are taking as medicine won't be harmful to you لا ضرر ولا ضرار That's a principle in our deen It's prohibited, it's not allowed for us to cause harm to ourselves nor to others So he told him that there is no problem with a person combining the both, uh, both the two ولكن الأصلة في ذلك السعي إلى الرقية الشرعية ثم استعمال الأدوية ما لم يلحق ذلك الضرر The essence is for you to first seek spiritual healing رقية شرعية before turning to the mainstream medication Why? Because فقال لقد جاء وصح عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يرويه إمام أحمد بن حنبل وحسنه الإمام الألباني في سلسلة الأحاديث الصحيحة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه وأرضاه إن الله تعالى حيث خلق الداء وخلق الدواء فتداووا In this explicit hadith, Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created illness, he, whenever he created illness, he also created with it a medication towards curing it. So there is nothing wrong with you seeking mainstream medication provided it won't bring you side effects. So there is nothing wrong with that. ولكن الأصل علاج الشرعي This is the essence for you to seek spiritual healing or treatment How? And it's very easy Why should we turn to charlatans Who view the ruqya as an enterprise, an investment Why should we turn to them? And yet ليس بيننا وبين ربنا حجاب there is no veil between us and our Creator. The solution to most of this mental illness that we have, Wallahi, is found in our deen. First and foremost, focus in akhirah, don't focus in dunya. Why should you have stress, sleep into depression because of this dunya? And yet Allah has guaranteed you. Allah has guaranteed you your dunya. But he hasn't guaranteed you your akhirah. That's the first solution. It's the key. For those who inflict upon themselves some of this mental illness or ailment through abusing drugs and the rest. For these ones, why do you think they abused those drugs? Why did they smoke bang or cannabis? Why did they take or indulge in these intoxicants and vices? It's because they are seeking dunya, not akhirah. So they caused harm upon themselves. And yet, Ar Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam said, Ma askara kathiruhu faqaliluhu haram. Explicitly, succinctly, clearly, straight to the point, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whatever intoxicates in large volumes, even when used in little and small volumes, it's still haram. Stay away from it. إنما يريد الشيطان أن يوقع بينكم العداوة والبغضاء في الخمر والميسر ويصدكم عن ذكر الله وعن الصلاة فهل أنتم منتهون؟ شيطان uses these intoxicants. And he uses gambling. Why do you think a person goes and gambles? 
because they want dunya. They will gamble, they will indulge in maysir because they want this dunya. And what is the ultimate price that they'll pay for it? Al adawata wal baghda. Al adawata ala anfusihim. They will create animosity towards themselves by regretting for the past. They went, they put, they booked a bet, they lost everything, now they are depressed. Now they are angry towards themselves. Yalumuna anfusahum. Al adawata wal baghda. Self piety and self hatred and also hatred of others but it starts with you internally so why did they gamble because of dunya why did they indulge into intoxicants because of dunya so don't turn this dunya into your focal point turn akhira into your focal point and save yourself from depression save yourself from anxiety someone is very anxious why because he is in critical debt. Why he indulged into the vice of betting and lost everything. Now auctioneers are knocking on his door or at his door. So he's anxious. Why did he put himself into this precarious or uh, into this predicament in the first place? Because of Tunia. So the first solution is turning akhira into your focal point, into your point of focus. Working for akhira, not for dunya. Dunya will come. That's a guarantee, wallahi al-azim. Dunya will come. Dunya will come. Secondly, dear brothers and sisters in Iman, al Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam said, in the hadith by Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu wa ardah, innahu la yusibu al-mu'minu min hammin wala ghammin wala huznin fayakulu Allahumma inni abduk wabna abdik wabna ammatik nasiyati biyadik maadhin fiya hukmuk Adlun fiya qadauk, subhanallah. Wallah, even in this adhkar, we have a solution. In this adhkar, we have a solution. Adlun fiya hukmuk. Your decree upon me is full of justice. Whatever you've given me is full of justice. That is what should have been given to me. It's so befitting to me. مَاضٍ فِيَا hukmuk, And whatever you decree upon me shall come to pass. نَاصِيَةِ biyadik. My forelock is in your hands. بِمَعْنَى My life and everything that I have is under your control, ya Allah. And they ask, and this is a solution in a solution. And تَجْعَلَ الْقُرْآنَ At the end, it's a long adhkar. أن تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي ونور صدري وجلاء حزني وذهاب همي وغمي سبحان الله أن تجعل القرآن أو الله see why is this servant of Allah supplicating to Allah because he is in depression because he is stressed because he is in a position of what we call mental instability. So he asks Allah and taj'al al-Qur'an rabi'a qalbi. Wa nura sadri. Give me the Qur'an as a solution to my issues. Turn it into the light that will guide me through the path of life that I'm taking. And yet Allah tells us, Allah bi dhikri lahi tatma'innu al-qulub. But because our iman has shifted, because we rely in other than Allah, we've turned this dunya into our focal point of focus. We don't see matters in this way. So start with the ruqya shari'i and then go to the hospital. 
الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام تتأس المعوذتان سورة الفلق أن سورة الناس we have سورة الفاتحة in which الله سبحانه وتعالى says قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي قسمين that Allah has divided that surah itself between him and you into two parts if you say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Allah says hamidani abdi my servant has praised me till iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in Allah tells you hadha li wa li abdi ma sa'ala till this section this is mine whatever my servant will ask I will give and you ask Allah for guidance Surah Al-Fatiha is there for us. Ayat Al-Kursi is there for us. We have Adhkar. We have the fortress of a mu'min. The fortress of a Muslim. So the only thing we need to do, we already have the solution with us. Why should we be stressed? Some people, they go to the psychologist and they empty all their sins to them as though they are confessing. It's as though they are confessing, subhanallah. And we are told by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever will bring his sins into open and yet Allah had concealed his sins for him, فَلَا يُسْمَحْ لَهُ فَلَا يُغْفَرْ لَهُ فَلَا يُغْفَرُ عَنْهُ You go to a psychologist, you share with him or her all your sins. I stole there, I did that, I bet so and so. And yet Allah had concealed some of these things. And then you want to be forgiven. Ya khiya ibad ar-Rahman, falanusbih, falanusbih uqalah. Let us be smart. Confess to Allah. Or do we allow, do we accept the school of thought that is held by the Catholics when you commit a sin? You go to the uh, bishop and then you confess. Wal-iyadu billah. Faya ibad ar-Rahman. After the salah, we will do what we call fundraising for the sake of the masjid, for the sake of this ummah. So please, you will stick with us. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu la yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وارضى اللهم عن سائر صحابة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خصوصا منهم أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عفيت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا إلى طاعتك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب الفقراء والمساكين اللهم نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب الفقراء والمساكين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اجعل القران ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء حزننا وجلاء احزاننا وذهاب وذهاب همنا وغمنا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا واجعل الاخره اكبر همنا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وصلى الله على خير خلق نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم قوموا الى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله